Hello, today we are here to talk to you about the options Greeks known as Charm and Vanna. We're going to describe to you what these Greeks are, and whether you trade options, stocks, or futures, we're going to describe to you what the impact is of these two effects because of the way that dealers have to adjust their flow. Now, before we get started, we just want to note that we are making a lot of generalizations here as we explain these concepts. And so take that into account as we move through this presentation. Number one, let's start with Delta. And the reason we're starting with Delta is because Charm and Vanna both describe changes to Delta over time or over volatility. So what's Delta? Delta tells us how much the price of an option is expected to change for a $1 change in the underlying stock. If you have a call option that has a 50 Delta and the stock goes up a dollar, your option is expected to go up 50 cents. Now, what you can see here on this chart, which shows the call Delta for different options over different time, is that Delta is dynamic, meaning that whether you have more time to expiration or your strike is higher or lower, that can dictate what the delta of your option is. Another way of saying that is that the sensitivity of the options changes over time. So while you may have a 50 delta option today in a month, all else equal, that option delta may be 60 or 40, it could shift around. So now that you understand that delta is a measure of sensitivity to the options price, that is, if the stock goes up or down, how much is your option value going to change? Let's talk about Charm and Vanna. Charm specifically, a lot of people call it Delta Decay, it describes how Delta changes over time. So as we march forward towards expiration in an option, the Delta of your option is changing as well. And we'll dive more into exactly what that means. Just for now, know that Charm relates to time decay of Delta. The next one, Vanna, relates to the sensitivity of Delta or changes in Delta to changes in implied vol. So imagine the VIX going up or down. Well, the VIX going up or down is a measure of implied volatility. So when the VIX goes up or down, it's telling you that the sensitivity, in other words, how much options will move relative to price is changing as well. Now you may be noting here that we left out gamma. Gamma has been covered ad nauseum across the internet. If you go to spotgamma.com and look up gamma, we have some excellent presentations on exactly what that Greek is. We do wanna to note here today, just for complete coverage, that gamma measures how much delta changes for the underlying stock's price change. Now, the reason that this matters to you, whether you trade options, stocks, or futures, is because of the concept of delta hedging. We just described delta as the sensitivity of an option to a change in the underlying price, but we can also use delta as a hedge ratio. So what do we mean by that? Well, in this example, if your option has a delta of 50, you would need to be long or short 50 shares of stock to hedge out the price impact of your option. So let's dive into this concept of delta neutrality. In this example, we are long one call option, which has a 50 delta. We also denote this as 0 0.50. If the stock is at 100 and your stock goes up a dollar, as we said before, if the stock goes up a dollar and you have a 50 delta, your option should make 50 cents. And that's indeed what we show here. Conversely, if the stock goes down a dollar, you lose 50 cents on your option. So you could see the P&L swing from your option in this third column. Now, note before we said that if your hedge ratio, uh, in this case, if you have a 50 delta option, your hedge ratio would be shorting 50 shares. And so if you are at the same time you're long this call, short 50 shares of stock, look what happens to your P&L, right? Your, your P&L is neutral because yes, your stock went up a dollar, your option made 50 bucks, but since you're short 50 shares, you lost $50 on those shares. So you are P&L neutral from a change in underlying price. Now you may say, well, who would wanna do this? And the answer is volatility traders or market makers, the types of groups that are collecting bid ask spread, doing some different things like that. Those are some concepts we'll cover in a few moments. The other thing to note about this is that this option here is a 50 delta option at this moment in time. As soon as we change time or imply volatility shifts, your delta is changing as well. Okay, so first let's dive into charm. Charm quantifies how delta changes as time passes. A kind of fun way to think about this is options get more charming with age, which is simply a way of saying that with 30 days of expiration, charm is not a big impact on an option, but when you get to a zero DTE option, well, that matters a lot. And the reason this matters so much is because of this time decay aspect. An option is going to be in the money or out of the money at expiration, right? And that can often 
times determine whether or not you're making money on your position. And so as we get closer to expiration, imagine with just an hour or two, you can have a pretty good shot at understanding, okay, this option is going to expire in the money or out of the money based on the underlying price. Let's show you an example of that. So here what we did is we show a call option that has a 50 delta and 30 days to expiration. That's what you see here in this blue line. And what you could see is that at 100, this is roughly a 50 delta option. And if we look down in strike, you can see there's still a little bit delta on this option. If we move up on strike, there's still a little bit of delta in this option. But the more time decays, the more we shift to one day, it becomes almost a binary choice, right? Either the option is in the money or out of the money. And so delta is either one or 100 or zero, right? Because at expiration, that's all that matters, in the money or out of the money. And so you could see this is the effect. And so if you had a big position on that was decaying over time, you could see how you would need to adjust hedge ratios or how your optional portfolio is going to act differently relative to underlying stock move. Now, let's talk about Vanna. Vanna, as I mentioned before, measures how Delta changes with implied volatility. One of the big things to note here is that Vanna matters more when implied volatility is high. So if you think about a stock just before earnings where implied volatility is very high, or if you think about the VIX when it's at 50, right, that's telling you that this idea of Vanna is a little crazier, a little more impactful during those times. Another interesting thing here is that if implied volatility increases, delta of out of the money options can rise. And what's interesting about that is that implied volatility is an estimation of how much traders think the underlying stock is going to move. So if there is a 100% implied volatility, you think, great, there's gonna be a ton of movement in the stock, which gives your options more odds of going in the money, right? If you have a stock that's extremely volatile, the chance of it moving up 10, 20% to an out of the money option is much higher than a more boring name like a Coca-Cola, which has lower implied volatility. So that idea or concept makes sense. The other thing to note here is that implied volatility is not constant. Those of you who are understand fixed strike volatility or skew know that downside options tend to have higher implied vol. So that means if a stock just starts to move down, implied volatility changes, right? So it is a little bit of a dynamic uh, concept here when you're thinking about volatility surfaces and changes in implied vol, et cetera. And you have to realize that when volatility increases or jumps a lot, this idea of Vanna and its impact on Delta obviously matters a lot more. So how does Delta change for implied volatility? In this case, we took a call option with just a 40 Delta. And what you could see here is we took a average implied vol of 25%, which is blue, and we lifted that implied vol up. When we go from 15% implied vol to 50% implied vol, you almost have a straight line across this chart, which is telling you that those out of the money options have a bigger delta. And so those of you who like to trade in wild times, like a meme mania or something like that, and you're buying an out of the money call the day before Rory Kitty goes on TV. Well, the minute that Rory Kitty goes on TV and implied vol drops, your sensitivity of your option to the underlying stock drops dramatically. And if you're a market maker, and people are buying calls and you're hedging a call with a 50 delta or 30 delta on it, like we are right in this area, just as implied vol comes down, the delta value of that option is dropping. So if I needed to short 30 shares up here, I only need to be short 10, 15 shares just because implied vol is dropping. And that can invoke flows, right? Buying and selling from market makers, which can really push around uh, the underlying shares. So in this case, I wanted to give you a, an example of a market maker portfolio or just a big options portfolio to illustrate how these concepts matter. Over here, I loaded in a bunch of random options. They have random strike prices with random times to expirations and random implied volatilities and a bunch of different positions. And what spit out from the model here is it looks simply like I'm almost long some shares of stock. What you can see is that I get more delta as the stock goes up, the underlying price goes up, which is telling you that I'm getting longer and longer shares of stock, essentially, as the stock goes up. And I'll make money if the stock goes up. Conversely, if the stock goes down, this portfolio will lose money. And you can tell that because the deltas are decreasing. So how will the delta of this position change due to these ideas? So what you can see here from this portfolio is I get longer deltas as we get higher in the stock's price. And as the stock goes down, my deltas shrink. So this is critical to understand because as I'm hedging this portfolio, I may need to buy more shares as the stock goes up and sell more shares as the stock goes down in order to maintain that neutrality. So that's what this looks like just by looking at the underlying price.
So let's add in some of these concepts of time decay and applied vol shifting. So what do you see here? You can see that with my basic IV, the blue line, that's base IV, uh, we have this, again, this S curve that very much matches this S curve. Now, all I did here is I increased implied vol by 50%. And you can see that I now have this much more linear delta shape, right? That S curve turns almost a little bit more into a line. And so what that means is to the upside, I have more deltas to hedge. And to the downside, I probably have more deltas that I'm going to lose, right? It, it, it flattened out my delta exposure uh, or made it more linear, I should say. Conversely, if I reduced implied volatility of this portfolio by 50%, you can see how much those deltas shift, particularly the downside. You can see that uh, I go from 2,500 long deltas. If implied vol just drops, I go to up to almost 2,750 deltas. So you can see how that position shifts dramatically. And again, this all means that I would have to adjust my hedges uh, in accordance with these implied vol shifts. On this chart to the right, you can see it's fairly subtle in this, uh, in this example, but delta changing, blue is the original time, as I reduce time from one to two weeks, you can see I'm gaining deltas to the downside uh, and to the upside I would lose a little bit of delta depending on where the underlying price of the stock is. And so with, you know, one, two, three weeks to expiration, uh, you can see what the charm here is, but obviously the charm would increase like on zero DTE or, or when the portfolio has a lot of positions that are set to expire, you can see those deltas would probably jump a bunch depending on how close various strikes are to where the stock is trading. So again, what we're highlighting here is a, Rough example of what happens to a portfolio when you increase implied vol or shift time. So just to summarize this, charm impacts delta as time to expiration decreases. Vanna influences delta when implied volatility changes. And you should always consider both time decay and implied volatility changes when you're managing positions or when you're trying to estimate hedging flows. There's also an interplay between charm and Vanna because as time passes, it changes implied volatility. So a lot of these concepts overlink or overlap. And so that can lead to some fairly complex adjustments uh, for people with large options portfolios. And then lastly is this idea of skew. We wanted to mention too that implied volatility is not always linear. You have skew you have to take into account when you're measuring uh, implied volatility. For example, here uh, in our example, I simply shifted implied volatility up or down. Usually what happens due to call and put demand is implied vol shifts with the skew. So those are a couple of the other things to think about for those of you who are a little more advanced. Uh, hopefully we cleared this up for you a little bit, but what we do every single day at spotgamma.com is we are estimating what the dealer hedging impacts are from changes to implied volatility, as well as changes to time as we move closer to expiration and in and out of different expirations. And so we take a lot of the heavy lifting out for you. If you understand, okay, this is Charm and this is Vanna and Brent and the Spot Gamma team are describing those impacts. We can make it, uh, again, very simple for you to understand how these flows shift markets every day. And in relation to Charm specifically, we are on the cusp of launching a bunch of really cool tools. A lot of them are really helpful for Charm and Zero DT options in particular. And so we invite you to come out and check out spotgamma.com so you can kind of unveil the new tools that we have hidden behind uh, these guys who are super happy. So we hope this was helpful. Please join us over at spotgamma.com. Uh, any questions that you have, info at spotgamma.com or leave a comment down below.